Hello, welcome back. Now let us move on to the network layer. As you know, the network layer is concerned with getting packets from the source all the way to its destination. So there will be many routers and hopes in between, right? Whereas uh, data link layer is having a low level goal, right? That is just bothered about how to move frames from one end of the wire to the other end of the wire. So the network layer must know the topologies of the communication network and should be able to choose appropriate path through this subnet. Then only it can avoid overloading some of the paths while leaving some of the other paths idle or underutilized. Also in some case the source and destination machines may be in completely different networks. Well, again complicates this work. So we will discuss different issues and uh, how the network layer going to address those issues. Before moving on to the topic, let us first familiarize with the context of a network layer. The major component of the system is uh, carrier equipment, carrier's equipment. So all the routers and the interconnecting transmission lines together, the complete infrastructure is called carrier's equipment. It may be owned by a private company or uh, different parts may be owned by different companies. Okay. And uh, second component is the customer's equipment. It may be some personal computer, some personal device of a person or it may be some organization's land load. Here we can see that host H1 is directly connected to the carrier's router, right? A is the div uh, router which connects this host to this network. Whereas uh, H2, we can see that it is connected through this router F. F is actually owned or operated by this customer itself. Right. So when a host wants to send a packet, it will send to the nearest router. Suppose H1 wants to send some data, it will send to the nearest router. It may be part of the carrier's equipment or it may be part of its own network. Now let us move on to the different issues in network layer design. First one is store and forward packet switching. Then services provided to the transport layer. Then implementation of those services, connectionless service and connection oriented service. So let us uh, see one by one. Store and forward packet switching. Suppose H1 is the sender and H2 is the receiver. H1 will send the packet to the nearest router. Here it is A. And the packet will be stored here until it has fully arrived. Then only it can compute the checksum. When a packet arrives in the network layer of a particular router or host, it will be stored in a queue there and after that uh, checksum will be computed and uh, if there is some error the packet may be discarded. Otherwise a routing table will be there in every router. By consulting that, that routing table uh, this packet can be forwarded. Okay, So for every destination this routing table contains which outgoing link should be followed or which which is the next router to be followed. That information will be there in the routing table. So by checking the uh, destination address of this packet, next router can be selected, either this one or this one. Okay, like that, uh, that will be forward. So first store, then forward. That is called store and forward switching. You remember the packet how to be fragmented in the network layer, right? Why? Yeah, the layer just beneath it, that is the data link layer having a maximum payload restriction, right? Uh, in Ethernet, we have learned the frame format and the maximum payload size. 1500 bytes is the maximum packet size that can be received by the data link layer. So, if the data unit received by this network layer from the transport layer is greater than this, definitely this network layer will fragment it into parts and each fragment will be attached with the IP header, network header and that will be forwarded as a separate uh, packet to the data link layer. Next issue is services provided to the transport layer. As you know every layer will provide some services to the upper layer. What kind of services should be provided by this network layer to the transport layer? And these services are actually designed with some certain goals like uh, services should be independent of the network technology and uh, service should be independent of network topology and number of routers. So whatever may be the underlying network structure the services provided to the upper layer should be the same. And at the time of this uh, design of this network layer, there was an argument uh, like whether the network layer should provide 
connection oriented services or connection less services and the team represented by the internet community argues that the job of a router is just to move the packets around the network and nothing else that is subnet is always unreliable and it's the duty of the host machine obviously the transport layer right the, in the host machine to provide the necessary error control and flow control and this leads to the connectionless service so the best example for this connectionless service network is internet itself so in this uh, no packet order or flow control in the network instead those are left to the host machines so in the case of uh, this connectionless service each packet should carry the full destination address since each one will be forwarded independently along different routes so each and every packet should contain the complete uh, destination address and the second theme represented by the telecommunication or telephone companies argues that the subnet should provide reliable connection oriented service as per the view quality of service is the dominant factor so without connections in the subnet quality of service is uh, very difficult to achieve right and an example for the uh, connection oriented service is atm a synchronous transfer mode it was actually designed as a counter for telephone system and in telephone system most of the time the communication was synchronous that is uh, based on some common clock but uh, atm is not like that that is why it is named as asynchronous uh, transfer mode and this uh, atm is actually designed to solve all the world's uh, networking and telecommunication problems by merging voice data cable tv telephone telegraph uh, everything into a single integrated system so by using this single system everything can be provided for everyone that was the design aim of this and anyway, it didn't happen to its full extent claimed uh, but was successful than our osi reference for osi is uh, still a theoretical concept right so actually this atm is used in our telephone system now for removing the ip packets or over the network so it is uh, used internally since it is used internally we are not aware of its existence that's all now let us see how this uh, connection less service is actually implemented so in case of this connection less network the packets are injected into the subnet individually right and are routed independently of each other so in this case packets are called datagram and the corresponding subnet is called datagram subnet let us see how a datagram subnet works so here we have this uh, example network we have a sender machine h1 and a receiver machine h2 sender as you know is a personal machine directly connected to the router of the carrier's equipment whereas uh, h2 the receiver is a part of a lan and the private router is connected to the router in the carrier's equipment suppose the process p1 which is running on the machine h1 is having a long message to send to the process p2 which is running on h2 the application layer of this p1 will hand over that corresponding message to transport layer and giving instruction to deliver this message to process p2 in h2 now let us assume that the message is four times longer than the maximum packet size so the network layer has to break it into four different packets right let us number it 1 2 3 and 4 so the network layer in h1 will send these four packets to router a where it will be temporarily stored for checksum verification and every router has an internal table okay telling it where to send each packet for each possible destination so upon uh, receiving these packets this router will check for its destination of the packet and consulting the corresponding internal table it can find out where to forward so each uh, entry in this uh, routing table or internal table will be a pair which consists of a possible destination and the corresponding outgoing link or the router to be forwarded okay so for destination b it should be forwarded to router b for destination c routed to c for destination d the packet should be forwarded to router b like that for every possible destination what should be the outgoing router router a has only two outgoing lines right one line to b and one line to c so every incoming packet will be either forwarded to b or c that is uh, the table reflects here suppose packets 1 2 and 3 reaches uh, router a in a while and packet 4 reaches after some time 
okay in that case let us take the case of packet 1 packet 1 according to this table since the destination is f it should uh, forward it to root as c so packet 1 will follow this route from c c's table should be considered from c to f the router is e so that will be routed to e right and uh, from here from e to e sad uh, router table should be considered from e to f the uh, corresponding router is f itself from there it uh, the corresponding data length frame will be forwarded to the corresponding host okay and the process p2 and the same route will be followed by uh, two packet 2 and packet 3 also so all of them follow this route from h1 to a a to c c to e e to f and then through the lan to the process p2 this is the route suppose the packet 4 arrives at router after some time okay so by that time this uh, router's table is actually changed updated you can see here that now the for destination b the route to be followed is through b okay instead of c earlier so this type of updation will be there in routing table uh, dynamically maybe the network learns from the current traffic say there can be some uh, traffic jam across this way a c e so just to divert the traffic along some other way the routing tables are updated to forward the data through this path so a set of algorithms are there called routing algorithms to manage these tables and taking uh, routing decisions okay. so second type of service is connection oriented service in which if you want to send some message from one machine to another a connection should be established first between these two hosts and all the data from this sender to receiver will follow the same route okay and the corresponding subnet is called virtual circuit subnet and each virtual circuit will be given an identifier to identify that uh, circuit uh, just for simplicity let us take uh, numbers like 1 2 3 etc as identifiers for this connection and suppose h1 want to send some data to h2 it will first establish a connection and gi will give a identifier for that suppose the connection is through these uh, di three different routers like h1 then a c e f this is the route to be followed so that route is named as uh, numbered as route 1 connection 1 okay and every packet will contain a connection identifier so here you can see that in case of a uh, routing table of a first entry in the routing table of a says that if a receives the packet from host h1 with a connection identifier 1 it should be forwarded to router c again with the connection identifier 1 so the packet should uh, still carry the connection identifier 1 okay and C's table you can see that if it receives a packet from router A with a connection identifier 1 it should be forwarded to router E with connection identifier 1. Suppose H3 host S3 also want to send uh, some data to S2 can it use the same connection as uh, S1 use same path can be physical path can be used but if we use the connection identifier of, as 1 what happens there will be a conflict whether the data is coming from h1 or h3 just for example suppose in this router it receives the data packet from a carries the connection identifier 1 it may be from either h1 or h3 so that creates a confusion so every possible pair of sending host and receiving host a separate virtual circuit should be created even if they use the same physical path okay so h3 to h2 let us uh, create another virtual circuit uh, with connection identifier 2 so you can see here that the packet coming from h3 actually contains an identifier 1 but when it comes to a a will change that corresponding identifier to 2 to distinguish between so packets from h1 and packets from h3 for uh, the remaining routes it will follow the connection identifier 2 so this is how different uh, virtual circuits are established between the sending machines and receiving machines. And let us have a comparison between these two approaches virtual circuit and datagram subnets. So inside a subnet several trade offs exist between virtual circuits and datagram. One is between the router memory space and bandwidth required for transmission. So in case of virtual circuit subnet uh, packets need to carry only the circuit number right. 
which will be small as small number will be attached with every packet whereas in case of datagram subnet uh, every packet should contain the full destination address so that will require uh, or that will create an overhead right so a lot of bandwidth will be wasted for this and the second trade off is setup time versus address passing time so in case of virtual circuit uh, it requires a setup phase right initially a full path should be established so definitely some time and resources will be taken for this but once the connection is established uh, routing is easy right using this circuit number virtual circuit number as the index into the table it can find out the path for each packet whereas in datagram there is no need of initial uh, path setup so that time can be saved but more complicated lookup procedure is required to find for every destination what is the corresponding outgoing line that should be searched in the uh, lookup table or the routing table so that uh, that much time for every packet is required in the case of a datagram subnet another issue is the amount of table space required in router memory so datagram subnet needs to have an entry for every possible destination right lot many entries should be there in every uh, router there is a virtual circuit uh, subnet just needs an entry for each virtual circuit only so the number of entries may be small in case of a virtual circuit subnet so regarding quality of service virtual circuit is better because uh, by establishing a connection prior to the transmission it is actually reserving in advance right the resources like uh, bandwidth or buffers everything so uh, it will be better in terms of quality of service but in datagram subnet there is no such reservation right Uh, as and when a uh, data packet arrives at a router, it should be forwarded depending on the path available. So congestion avoidance is more difficult in case of datagram subnet. Virtual circuit have another problem that is vulnerability problem. Say for example, if a particular router crashes or its internal memory is in trouble, what happens? Every virtual circuit which uh, follows through that router will be affected. Right? All the transmission should be aborted. whereas in case of datagram subnet we can uh, find some alternative path to follow right this is a summary of comparison between these two types of uh, communication circuit setup is not needed in case of datagram whereas it is, it is <coughs> this is a summary of comparison between these two types of uh, services circuit setup is not needed in case of datagram where it is needed in case of a uh, virtual circuit subnet addressing each packet should contain the full destination and source address in case of datagram just a virtual circuit number in case of a virtual circuit subnet state information the connection information should should not be there in case of a datagram where whereas in case of virtual circuit this connection information should be stored in the router table routing each packet can be routed independently in case of datagram route chosen when virtual connection is set up all the packet from that source to destination will follow the same virtual connection effect of router failure it will not be affected in case of datagram we can find some alternative path only uh, problem is low packets lose during crash effect of router failures that will not be affected in case of datagram subnet uh, we can find some alternative paths for communication only the packets which were in that router during the crash that will not that will effect of router failures uh, this router failure will not affect datagram subnet we can find some alternative routes right only the packets which were in those uh, that uh, crashed router that will be lost and uh, second case all the virtual circuit that passed through that failed router are terminated quality of service can be assured in case of virtual circuit whereas it cannot be done in case of datagram subnet congestion control is very difficult in case of datagram subnet it is easy because uh, we are in we have reserving enough resources in case of a virtual circuit subnet